Friends, welcome to Asheville Baptist Church online for the what, 15th time, is it? I think somebody said last week was our 14th. It's great to have you with us. It's great to be together online on a cold morning, warm in our own homes. We're going to start with a responsive prayer again on the theme of us being uh, the branches of Jesus' vine. We are the branches rooted in the vine of Christ. We, we come, come because, because we seek to abide in Christ. Christ. The branches that remain in the vine bear much fruit. We, we come, come because, because we long to be spiritually vibrant, alive, productive. If we abide in Christ, then Christ's words will abide in us. We, we come, come because, because we strive to be faithful disciples. We gather for worship now to the glory of the one God, creator, redeemer, sustainer. 
May we grow wildly as God tends us lovingly. Amen. Well, we're going to sing together. We're going to sing who, I, who You Say I Am and then Trinity. Father God, thank you that we are your children. You've called us into your family. You've set us amongst loving brothers and sisters. Thank you that we can meet together as your family today. Amen. announcements. Now there's a few announcements. I'm not sure who'd like to give them. Uh, you probably got the email this week that uh, our service is going to go back live together in the flesh on the 19th of July, which is th three Sundays time. So um, one of the elders or somebody want to speak some more to that? Hi Liz. Um, Hi, welcome. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, 
that's the big news of the of the week that all being well we will be meeting together live on the 19th there right. will be differences the memo that's already gone round indicates that there will be certain things we'll be doing quite differently and uh, that'll be a little bit challenging for us just to get used to the way of things but we're going to ease our way into that gently step by step we're not going to go for a big crash bang wallop launch but um, just take things slowly and feel our way but th through the first few weeks um, there will be something coming out from maria in the next few days about finances um, for those who give no through the church bank account normally nothing will change but we one of the things that we're not able to do is take up offerings <laughs> so we'll be making alternative arrangements and there'll be some other stuff that Maria's put into place, but she'll be letting you know that during the course of the next um, few days or so. Other than that, there's also a meeting of the Pastoral Selection Committee tomorrow night. So again, please pray for that. We have some more names to have a look at tomorrow night. So um, we'll value the prayers of the church while we go through that process. Thanks, Liz. Great, right. thanks, Gordon. That's great. Right. Uh, you, I'm sure you'll all be very excited to know as well that we have started the process for our church camp for next year. So the camp will be on the last weekend of April and May. We'll send out a save the date shortly. Uh, it looks like we've got our speakers locked in as well. So we're going to Atanga, which is the same place we went to last year. So start to get excited. I certainly am. <laughs> Did anybody else have any more announcements, things that we all needed to know? Um, can I throw in one about youth? Yes, absolutely. We're also uh, moving towards a, a new way of operating. So uh, on Friday night, our, we had our first face-to-face, -face, but the girls went in one direction, thank you, Pottons, and the boys went in another. Thank you to the Goldie Gibbs household for, for that. Um, next Friday, the 3rd of July, we are having a post-ISO party at the Powell's Palatial Pad. Thank you, Mark Wellings. And everybody has to dress up as something starting with P. So um, that's, that's, they should have all the information, but yes, we will be having our celebration party before we have a break uh, and then actually meeting face-to-face -face with the church on July the 19th, but we'll be going into the hall. Great. Very exciting. Life is starting to look something like normal. We have to keep praying that we don't have an outbreak here like they're having in Victoria and we need to pray for our friends there as well. Uh, any more announcements from anyone? No? Okay, great. Well, the youth are now going to zoom out to their own meeting, uh, which they should all have the link to. It's the same, I assume, as usual. Uh, and Ken is going to lead us in prayer. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. G'day, g'day. All right, uh, let's pray. Uh, dear Lord, I... I thank you, firstly, that, that we are able to gather uh, in this, uh, this different format. Um, uh, we look forward to um, this, this phase ending um, and so that we can meet back in person together. Lord, I, I suppose, regardless of that, we, we, we just need to, I'd like to pray that we remember the blessing that we have in your son, despite all our circumstances and certainly this country has has not been as badly affected as some other parts of the world lord and it's it's devastating in some areas um so so we just pray that this virus is this pandemic is still active and still rolling through countries lord please give the leaders wisdom lord and um Please, please help them to remember the value of human life um, and to protect life um, despite the, the, the consequences of that. Um, so, yeah, we, we just pray for, for this and we pray for the scientists working on, on a, a, vac a vaccine, if that's ever going to happen. But, Lord, we just pray that you give those people hope and wisdom and I mean, there are so many different organizations working around the clock to try to solve this problem which is a humanitarian crisis at the moment um we pray locally lord, lord that we we thank you so much that we are tentatively planning a return to church um 
in July, uh, in a few weeks' time. We, we we thank you so much, Lord. Um, again, that the way it's been managed in this country, generally speaking, has been a lot. It's been very good, and we, we thank you for the wisdom of our leaders who have listened to the scientists. Um, and um, generally speaking, it's been not so bad here. Um, uh, we, we also pray for our, this pastoral selection committee meeting, and we pray for the new list. We thank you for the new list of candidates, um, Lord, and, and help the committee to consider each of those and to make some plans um, uh, to, to make contact. And Lord, help us to <laughs> discern the right leader. Lord, Lord help us. Um, all these prayers are prayers for help, Lord, uh, um, as well as Thanksgiving. Um, we thank you for the church camp. Um, we look forward to that. I'm sure everyone is itching to get out and to be in touch with people um, in a safe way, of course. Um, and we also thank you for the youth um, who are reopening in a different sort of way, but limited way this, this, this coming week. Um, so, Lord, uh, these things and... and all other, all other things that we, we haven't caught up for people who aren't able to make these meetings, Lord, we, we, pray, we pray for a speedy return to in-person. Um, it is really quite different, I guess. Um, it's, it makes a, a big difference to be in touch with people face-to-face. -face. Um, help us to do that safely. Help us to do that wisely. Um, all these things we bring before you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thanks, Ken. That's great. That was a little hard to hear at some points, but I hope that everybody was able to join in prayer. Roger is going to read for us. We have two Bible readings this morning from Isaiah 62 and Galatians 5. Roger. Well, great. Can Just we... throw it up on the screen and I'll read it. I, uh... <laughs> okay, reading from Isaiah 62, 8 to 9. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies and foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have laboured. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord and those who gather it shall drink it in my holy courts. And also Galatians 5, 22 to 25. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. That's great. Thank you, Roger. That's short, short notice. <laughs> Peter, over to you to bring us the message, The Fruitfulness of Autumn. Good morning, all. And uh, I'm getting the feeling that maybe the, the novelty of Zoom is wearing off. I'm just waiting to see if I can see my face. We can see you, Peter. <laughs> what a blessing for you all. <laughs> I can see me now, yes. Well, we're paying visits to the vineyard, a visit for each of the seasons. We are also following the observations and insights of Wayne Jacobson. Christian author who was raised on a Christian vineyard, his father's vineyard. Now, I want to just do a postscript from last Sunday's message. Wayne revealed, and I was sharing, how Wayne's father would take the family away on a camping holiday just before harvest. For the farmer, the harvest was of vital importance, and yet there is more to life, even for a farmer, than growing grapevines. Some time back, I was watching Landline, trying to be very countrified. Tom Bradman was being interviewed. Now, Tom Bradman shares the name of his famous grandfather, the famous Sir Don Bradman. 
And Tom acknowledged that the man who had made that name famous has had some influence on his own approach to work and to life. And just to quote Tom Bradman, he said, he, that is Don, wouldn't care if I was a farmer or an astronaut, but I think whatever I did, he would want me to conduct myself with the sort of values that marked his life. And he went on, he said, they are values like integrity, honesty, humility, doing something which you find fulfilling, but which has some sort of positive contribution. And I sensed, I sensed that for Tom Bradman, farming, and he's a farmer, is important, but there's more to life than farming. Uh, and even if you're growing grapevines as a farmer, there's more than growing grapevines. So getting back to this postscript from last week, pastors can burn out. And so can staff members and so can volunteers. I, and I just say that because it's a significant before this church calls your 15 years or so. My role has been um, in transition churches, interim ministries, intentional interim ministries. And uh, I have observed that pastors typically have resigned, but the reasons are variously identified. And within the mix of reasons, there are sometimes symptoms of burnout. It would be wrong to look for a single reason or believe that it was a singular event. Um, yes, the pastor can do and ought to do much to recognise and arrest the potential drift into burnout. Churches also have a role to play. I mentioned, I think, last week or over the weeks, something called the Covenant of Care. It's a resource that deserves attention, or you can write your own. Uh, at the time of the appointment of a pastor, another tool is a regular pastor review. Now, not with, a, not with a view to just tick boxes of what a pastor is doing or not doing. That's not really helpful. Over the past 35 years, 40 years, I have at times participated with a church where I happen to be pastoring and, and done an annual pastoral review. And the most helpful and the most fruitful approach is when we would remind ourselves, that is the panel and myself, that the aim is how can we bring out the best in our pastor? How can we make the most of our shared ministry? So I say again, pastors, pastors burn out. Some pastors, particularly in their early years or in their middle years, need to discover that there's more to life than pastoring a church, just as a farmer needs to discover there's more to life than becoming a slave to the vineyard. All right, so Wayne's father took the family away because the next season that was coming would be climactic. We're going to visit the vineyard at its busiest. Time for celebration. It is autumn in the vineyard. The vines are sagging now under the weight of the fruit, like tired swayback horses. The leaves are ragged and frayed and dulled by a heavy cloak of dust. Some have yellowed, others have wilted away or been ripped and tattered. And the vineyard is not particularly beautiful this time of the year, except to the farmer, because to him, the beauty lies in its fruitfulness. Half is at hand. Now I've got to show you this. These are some I prepared earlier. God has brought another crop to completion. It's a cause for rejoicing. And you can see them at a distance. I'd love to offer you these. They are juicy and they are very sweet. I'm going to eat them later, or some of them. Celebration. Maybe you have vivid memories from childhood of special times. Well, you will have. For Wayne, he remembers the last ride on the tractor from the fields to the barn at close of harvest. The trailers were stacked as high as possible, trying to make each trip the last. And the sun-ripened grapes formed a mountain, sloping down to the edges of the box. And the crop was in and safe, and the hot, dusty work was over. And Wayne describes the awesome sight of rows and rows of boxes stretched out across the top of the hill near the outbuildings. The entire year's labour, the entire year's income, stacked in those boxes. So not surprisingly, the last act of harvest was always a celebration. There'd be shouting, there'd be laughter, there'd be a song. And you'd get cleaned up, there'd be a magnificent meal, a feast to celebrate the harvest and the gracious God who made it all possible. Celebration is as much a part of the vineyard as is diligence and perseverance and hard work. Now, in modern life, we can lose touch 
maybe with the essential connection of harvest and survival as consumers anyway. I certainly can. A crop fails, well, produce is sourced from another area or even another country. <clears throat> Prices fluctuate and so we adjust our choices. And probably unknowingly, we buy produce that has been in cold storage for many months. Okay, we live in different times. Harvest celebrations come from an era when the safe harvest was the lifeline for the next year. And I guess if you're on the land, that's still very true. In the Old Testament, we read that God ordained two feasts to bracket the harvest. The feast of harvest came at the beginning when the precious first fruits were offered to God in thankfulness for another crop. Then the feast of in gathering marked the successful completion of the harvest. And both were to be celebrated before God, for he, not merely the processes of nature, had provided bountifully for the year to come. It's one thing to see the fruit, I held up a moment ago. It's another thing to see the Father's hand in the harvest. It makes for grateful hearts and rejoicing. And it's true also in, in your life and in my life. The lessons learned, the changes made, relationships healed, hope restored, the fruit, the fruit of love and joy and peace, of gentleness and self-control, this is his doing. And that's why we mark it with celebration and gratitude to God. The second heading is no harvest question mark. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vine. That's in Habakkuk and you've sung the chorus, I know. The promises of spring, the perseverance of summer, can one yet reach the time of harvest and have nothing to show for it? And Wayne remembers twice where the entire crop was lost. Unseasonal rains in autumn rotted the entire crop while they were lying on the ground to dry. It was a crop of raisins. Can a crop be lost in our Heavenly Father's vineyard? Can we faithfully pursue God with all our heart, only to have fruitfulness snatched away at the moment of promise? The answer is no, but there's more to the answer than that one word. The, answer, the reason the answer is no, because of words that you know from Isaiah 55. It says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I have sent it. So yes, as long as we remain in the vine, and are nourished by Christ's word, our lives will indeed bear fruit. And yet, the fruit our lives bear may not be the fruit we anticipate. We may have unrealistic expectations of what our fruitfulness may mean. We may confuse being fruitful with being successful according to the measure of the world. And sometimes even of voices among us, I was preparing some study questions to go with it. This message and I said uh, it's good to think about what does success look like for Asheville Baptist Church and when you're interviewing a pastor ask that candidate what does success look like for you it's a good question to ask it's a good conversation to have you go back into the New Testament in the early days of the church Stephen had a promising ministry he was a dynamic speaker he was a fearless follower of Jesus and yet, as is recorded in Acts, just as he was in his ascendancy, he was killed. He was stoned to death. A harvest aborted, some would conclude. And yet there would be fruit, not only in the witness of his life and death and its preserved record, but in the eventual witness of another who was present at Stephen's execution, a man who would later be called Paul. If we remain in the vine, God will be faithful to produce fruit in and through our lives. But not all our fruit will be born in ease or even in this life. And not all fruit will be known to us. That's important to remember. Don't look to your circumstances for the measure of your harvest. You simply cannot trust your perceptions of them. And yes, a harvest can be lost. If we give in to the enemy's devices and give up on our faith or because of rebellion we face judgment. This happened to Israel many times. It will happen to us if we abandon God. But he preserves the harvest of those who remain on the vine, even if the harvest comes in unexpected forms. 
And sometimes God has other plans. Wayne watched his father as that first time God didn't stop the rains pelting down in sheets. An inch of rain had fallen on the dry grapes a few days before, damaging them severely. The second storm would spell their end. And Wayne says he saw the helplessness, the disappointment in his father's face. He felt as bad for him as he had felt for anyone. Didn't God care? How could he let this happen? The child speaking says, what are we going to do, Dad? Wayne asked, wondering how they would eat in the coming year. His father's response was clear. The Lord is faithful. And after a long pause, he said to Wayne, we'll just have to see how the Lord will provide for us in the year ahead. And provide he did, Wayne says, we didn't miss any meals that year. More importantly, was this unforgettable lesson God gave me through my father's faith. Circumstances can be troublesome, even devastating. Well, we're facing that. The world is facing that at the moment. But grapes, grapes are just grapes. Circumstances are just circumstances. They need not destroy our fruitfulness or the kingdom. Fruit and seeds. As you eat a piece of fruit this week, as you buy in and the flavour explodes in your mouth, it's easy to forget the fruit is also a seed. The very first chapter of Genesis points out that God created fruit for this dual purpose, food to be eaten and seed to be sown. Reflect for a moment on our friendship with Jesus as he shapes us into his image. The fruit of our spiritual lives draws others, others into his kingdom. The fruit of the spirit in our lives becomes the seed of the gospel in theirs. Those who watch us need to see, ought to see God in us. How will they know? How will they know his love if we don't love them? How will they understand his gentleness and forgiveness unless we demonstrate it? How will they know he is faithful unless we are faithful to them? In other words, harvest time is ministry time. I'll tell you a quick story about a fellow at work back in the days of computers and programming. And uh, a fellow came up to me one day and said, can we maybe go out for lunch tomorrow? I said, sure, we can do that. You know, I, I didn't know what he wanted to say or talk about or ask, but I, I dug out of one of the drawers in my room a little, a little badge shaped like a fish, one of those little badges, lapel badges. And these were the days when computer programmers actually wore suits to work, so we're going back a long time. And I wore this little, little fish-shaped badge. And so we went out to lunch and we sat down and he looked at me and said, I'm, I'm glad you wore that little badge because I wanted to tell you I, I became a Christian last Sunday. Now, I don't think I preached anything at church to say I was a Christian, but he obviously knew that he wanted to share and we talked. It was just a great time of sharing. Um, God shapes us. And, and when, when we maybe go out to lunch with that co-worker, maybe when we run an errand for a neighbour, when we offer a listening ear to a friend or a stranger, whenever... Another human being is warned by our love or uplifted by our hope or disarmed by our patience, inspired, inspired or even unsettled by our faith. That person encounters the life-giving reality of the gospel. It may not be words necessarily, but seeds are sown and as a result of our fruitfulness. And the truth is that the heart of harvest ministry is not really through sermons or programs or events or Christian books. These can be helpful. But the heart of harvest ministry is people encountering people. And that's a choice that you and I face. There'll be plenty of times when we'd rather do almost anything than engage with a neighbour or colleague or acquaintance and give of ourselves, of our time, our emotional energy. But something interesting happens when we choose to do ministry. We find the process of ministry furthers our growth on the vine. God shapes us. We take opportunities. We take opportunities, God grows in us. And more opportunities present themselves. And fruit and seeds are part of the same process. We are made for fruitfulness. Well, we need to finish soon. Last heading is don't stop growing. Have you stopped growing? Let's observe the vineyard one more time. The harvest is winding down. Most of the crop is already on racks, the dry. Uh, in Wayne's case, it was to dry into raisins. But the branches are spent and depleted by the effort of ripening the fruit. The leaves are bedraggled. The vines seem to sigh with relief that the growing season is finally over. 
but it isn't over, not quite yet. Something's happening. Even with the harvest drawing to a close, the vines, the branches and the leaves are still at work. They're taking up moisture and nutrients from the soil. They're drawing on the sun's rays to convert those nutrients into usable nourishment. The sap is still flowing. The branches are still growing. The growth that happens now, in fact, is just as crucial as the growth of spring or summer, though not as visible to the observer. Because what the vines are doing is storing up strength for the fruit of seasons to come. The harvest is not the end of the cycle of seasons. In fact, next year's grapes are already being formed in the buds of the new canes. And if the branch were to let down now, next year's crop would be impaired. Of the dormancy of winter, we'll be coming back next Sunday for winter. The nutrients stored will be in reserve and be available next spring when the branch explodes with new life. Remember the words, remain in me, abide in me. And we've recited those words in each of the season because there's no season where that charge with those words did not apply. Never stop growing. Even during harvest times, perhaps especially during harvest times, allow your relationship to deepen. Recognise his voice. Listen for his voice. And for every harvest, remember, <coughs> a vineyard does not bear fruit once and then die. Even when the fruit is being gathered, there are yearnings and visions stirring for crops still to come. I was thinking about that as I read that this morning. I was thinking about Asheville Baptist Church. And I was thinking the seasons that it's been through and, and the seasons of harvest and sowing that it's gone through. And the times of spring and summer and autumn and winter reflected in the life of Asheville Baptist Church. Don't be surprised if one season of harvest doesn't fulfil all your dreams and visions. God will bring another season and another, and he will do that in Asheville Baptist Church until finally, the final harvest, the reapers bring history to its conclusion. So it's the end of autumn. In the vineyard, the branch is ready for winter. If you're in town, or even if you're not in town because of the magic of Zoom, you can join us. Let's make our final wintry visit to the vineyard. Let me pray for us. Again, our God, we thank you for the lessons from your word as your spirit speak to us and the, um, the images that you bring to our minds uh, that play with our minds because of uh, the world that we live in. We do pray for fruitfulness in our lives. We pray for fruitfulness in the ministry and through our church. We want to know you, come to know your life in them, your forgiveness and your mercy. So we pray for fruit, fruitfulness as we plan ahead, as we look, as the team continues to listen to one another and to you as they interview candidates. Lord, be with them, guide them. And Lord, may your name be lifted up. May your fruit be evident. Uh, may your mercy be poured out in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Peter. We're going to sing our last song together. We're going to sing Lead Me to the Cross. pray together. God of harvest, gardener supreme, you place us at the centre. Feed us, equip us, and having provided for us, look to a different harvest, a fruitfulness of lives in service to you and others. God of harvest, feed us, prune us, harvest us, that our lives might bring glory to you. Amen. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power of work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen.
Thanks so much for joining with us today. That's the end of the formal part of our service. But as usual, we will stay online and drink cups of tea and chat together. So please stay on and have a wonderful week. Amen.